Assalamu alaikum students, how are you? Uh, today we are going to learn about the anterior abdominal wall. Here you can see this is anterior abdominal wall but internal aspect of that wall. It means you are looking at the anterior abdominal wall from the internal, uh, from the inside. So we have got certain longitudinal folds on, on the anterior abdominal wall which you can appreciate here. This is median umbilical fold, median umbilical fold. Then on either side of the median umbilical fold, we have got medial umbilical folds, medial umbilical folds. Then further lateral, we have got lateral umbilical folds, lateral umbilical folds. So in a while, I will be discussing what structures lie underneath these umbilical folds and what results in their formation. So this is urinary bladder. You are looking at urinary bladder from the superior aspect and this is peritoneum. This is peritoneum which has been tethered from this side so you can see the underlying urinary bladder. So this is peritoneum and this peritoneum is reflected upon on the anterior abdominal wall. So this median umbilical fold, it is being formed by the uracus or median umbilical ligament and paraumbilical veins. So median umbilical fold is the result of because underlying obliterated uracus or and parallel uh, paraumbilical veins are lying under this median umbilical fold. Then medial umbilical fold on either side, these medial umbilical, um, umbilical folds are formed by, you know, umbilical arteries, obliterated umbilical arteries. As you can see, this is umbilical artery. Here they have been obliterated and then peritoneum covers them. So medial umbilical folds on either side are being formed by the obliterated umbilical arteries, whereas median umbilical fold is formed by the obliterated uracus and paraumbilical veins. Whereas further uh, lateral we have got here lateral umbilical fold as you can see on the right half of the model the peritoneum has been removed all over so you can have a good a very well better understanding of the underlying structure. So these are inferior epigastric arteries inferior epigastric arteries which are arising from the you know, external ilic vessels, external ilic vessels, inferior epigastric artery. And here you can see the inferior epigastric artery is entering into the rectus sheath, rectus sheath. So these uh, inferior epigastric arteries are going to anastomose with the superior epigastric arteries, which are terminal branches of one of the terminal branch of the uh, internal thoracic or internal mammary artery. So with this anastomosis would take place in this rectus sheath. So again, median umbilical fold, medial umbilical folds on either side, then lateral umbilical folds. Median, here you can see uh, this muscle in the background is, is abdom, rect, uh, rectus abdominis muscle. Here you can see this is linea alba, linea alba, and this is rectus abdominis on one side, and this is rectus abdominis on other side, and these are external ab uh, oblique, then internal oblique, then transversus abdominis muscle, and rectus sheath is being formed by the splitting of the internal oblique into anterior and posterior lamina, and these two lamina they wrap the rectus muscle and then they join to each other in the midline again resulting in formation of linea alba then again split and the opposite side same thing is happening the innermost muscle is transversus abdominis here you can see the direction of muscle fibers these are transversus abdominis muscle fibers and here we have got rectus sheath is missing posteriorly uh, below the arcuate line this is arcuate line arcuate line and further uh, things you, which you can see uh, in this model is as you, this, these are seminal ves vesicles, seminal ves vesicles. And this is prostate gland, prostate gland. So it means this is the anterior abdominal wall of a male, um, uh, here, here, male person. Here you can see these are, this is prostate. These are seminal vesicle on either side. And here we have got ductus 
deference, ductus deference, ductus deference, ductus deference, this ductus deference along with the testicular vessels entering into the, through the uh, deep inguinal ring into the inguinal canal and uh, from there it will, they, these vessels will join the testes and uh, ductus deference uh, will become epididymis. So, uh, and th these are the uh, iliosos muscles, iliosos muscles and hip bones, hip bone ileum. So, finally, again, median umbilical fold, medial umbilical folds, lateral umbilical folds, rectus abdominis, rectus abdominis, linea alba, external oblique, internal oblique, transversus abdominis, then here this is peritoneum and just inside peritoneum is fascia transversalis and then extra peritoneal fat all along. So this was a bit about the um, anterior abdominal wall from internal aspect. Thank you very much.